Hi there. So uh, the last couple of lessons, I said that I would tell you the story of how I got my stolen guitar back. This guitar was stolen, was it in 2011? And then five years later, I got it back. And um, both experiences were uh, powerful experiences. Uh, I, I guess in the last couple of lessons, I told you more about how it got stolen, but I really didn't tell you how I got it back. So um, when it got stolen, I of course made a police report and I registered my guitar on a number of websites for stolen instruments um, that just sort of help put found instruments together with the owners from whom they were stolen. And, um, you know, put in the serial number and stuff like that. And then I put um, the login for those websites here and, you know, the police report and then my little packet of important papers from my Martin guitar. I just laid it um, on the corner of my desk for five years. Uh, so that if anything ever came up, I would have, you know, everything I needed to retrieve my guitar. Uh, so I just hoped that um, whoever had it would change their mind and want to give it back, actually. <laughs> and um, I also just hoped and prayed that it would be safe or that whoever had it would... Um, need it worse than me and take good care of it um that sort of thing and i just had i i just had this inkling that maybe i could get it back i wasn't sure i was not certain that i wouldn't get it back and when i was filling out you know those websites with the information for um you know stolen instruments uh, it kind of felt like it was probably futile, but on the other hand, I had heard stories about people getting their instruments back. So, um, and then time went on. And uh, I guess just to kind of recap the, the technique, I'd already changed my technique when I was in music school because I had a bad technique because uh, I was self-taught and so I had to change my technique when I was in music school, but the only thing I really changed was putting my wrist straight instead of, you know, this sort of thing, which is bad. I, I learned to do everything with a straight wrist and that helped, but there's some other very important things I still hadn't learned. So uh, let's see, fast forward to guitar got stolen. The shape of the neck on the back is different as I explained in one of the last two lessons and I had to start playing a different guitar. Uh, so my technique just sort of inadvertently changed. Uh, I just adjusted gradually. I actually didn't pay much attention to, to consciously changing my technique. And then when, uh, when I got my guitar back, um, well, I'm supposed to tell you the story of how I got it back, but that's when my technique changed again. That's why I really changed um, a lot of things about my technique and which has allowed me to grow and progress more again and do not be stuck with you know just some of the simple things i've been playing for 20 years <laughs> anyway so we're at a folk festival and um five years later after this guitar got stolen and i got this kind of a interesting message on facebook uh, oh somebody friended me and it was somebody i didn't know and i didn't pay any attention to it and then i got a uh what do they call it? Instant, a message, you know, Facebook message from this person who said, um, I live in such and such town, which is the name of the town where my guitar got stolen. And I have something um, that I believe may be very important to you. <laughs> so right away, um, oh, and he gave me his phone number. Um, so here I was camping out at a festival with lots of music going on and uh, people who had sympathized with me uh, when my guitar got stolen, and uh, people who sympathized with me when something else happened, which I'm gonna tell you in a minute about my guitar, and um, 
I called this person and he told me um, that he had a guitar, you know, and he, he thinks it's my guitar. He told me a lot of details about the guitar. So I knew that he had my guitar and he seemed really anxious to return it to me. And, um, we, you know, it took a while to figure out exactly how to get it, which is one of my favorite parts of the story. When I talked to people, you know, my age, um, most of them, man, I don't know why there's a lot of male guitar players and I mean, plenty of ladies playing guitar, but it just seemed, it just so happened that they were men about my age. And I was like, well, maybe, you know, we could, uh, several people were willing to contact a friend who was traveling through that town in my, I mean, we're talking about like, I think 12 hours away or so, or 10 hours away. It's, it's a long drive from where I was and where I live. And, um, you know, how to or ship it, uh, which is scary, you know, um, things can happen to damage the instrument. And I just think it's kind of funny because there's a couple of young guys um, that are very good guitar players who are friends. Um, I've known them since they were like little guys, uh, less than 10, and uh, asked them, you know, they told them the good news and, you know, gee, how should I, you know, what do you think? How should I get my guitar back? They're like, get in your car, and drive up there and get your guitar. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. So, uh, so I made plans to, to drive up there and uh, went overnight. And then the next day I was there and something about that drive, I have to say, was a spiritual experience. Just the fact that I was gonna get my guitar back. And the the landscape I was driving through um, was really majestic. Um, and, okay, there's a part of the story I didn't tell you. So, um, how this person got my guitar. So the person who called me and wanted to return my guitar to me said, uh, by the way, if I run out of time, I try to keep these less than 15 minutes, it's easier that way. I haven't learned how to post them if they're over 15 minutes yet. So you can see uh, this is all a learning process for me too. Anyway, I digress. Uh, if we run out of time, I'm just going to say to be continued. I'm going to try to finish up here a few minutes. I have a hunch I can't though. Anyway, um, the guy on the phone was a young man, obviously. I don't know why I knew that. Somehow I knew, or maybe the, his Facebook picture or profile or something. And he said he lived on a road where at the end of the road, you know, kind of like out in the sticks and at the end of the road, there was an illegal dump where people would go and dump stuff they weren't supposed to, but sometimes they did. So when they saw somebody driving down the road um, with a trailer, a lot of stuff on it, they would, go down to the dump and check it out and see what just got dumped. And sometimes they would find valuable objects. Um, so he saw a load going down the road and went down and looked around and uh, lifted up a door and underneath the door was my guitar case. Looked inside and found my guitar. So um, I know a lot of people find that hard to believe, including me. <laughs> I mean, this was in a place that was so hot. And um, yeah, there's a lot to the story. So um, I was a bit skeptical about the story. And we could talk more about that another time maybe. Because um, part of the reason I got the guitar back is because, well, he said he had, he had the guitar in his closet for about... I think it was four or five years. So he apparently found it soon after it was stolen and it just sat in his closet for the longest time, which is what I was praying for. He's just like, just let it be safe. <laughs> and um, he said he, he was interested in playing it, um, but it had a hole in it. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna try to hold it. See this gash in the side of my guitar? 
So that's another whole story, how that got there. <laughs> um, let's just make that story short. Um, flashback five years before it got stolen, and I left this guitar at the folk festival in the care of my daughter. And um, hadn't really instructed her about how the strap can come off unexpectedly. And she had the guitar on the strap slung behind her back, you know, like Elvis in the movies or something like that. And um, walking on a gravel road and the strap slipped off and the guitar went crashing into the road and hit a rock. And oh yeah, that is a long story. Um, yeah, maybe I'll have to tell that story another time because <laughs> that story has its ups and downs too. But um, so this person who had my guitar wanted to get it fixed. And he said that when he was looking for someone to fix it, at some point he was asked to enter the serial number and the model and serial number and it came up stolen. And um, then he got the information because of the websites where I'd registered it. Um, one of the things I put in was my Facebook uh, name and stuff. So that's how he was able to contact me on Facebook. And so if that story is true, the fact that my daughter dropped my guitar on the road and bashed a hole in it is actually a really lucky thing. <laughs> um, that's kind of a fun way to look at it. And when we got my guitar back, she said, well, you know, uh, if you'd like, I could come over and put holes in all your instruments just in case. <laughs> um, but we did not take her up on that. Anyway, um, let's see. So did we get, um, we got to the part where the supposed reason why he figured out the guitar was stolen and how he found me. And then I went up there and uh, we met at a coffee shop and um, that was interesting. I, the ladies at the coffee shop, actually kept the coffee shop open because I was late and they wanted to close. But I, I had told them I wanted to meet there to retrieve my stolen guitar. <laughs> and they were like, um, who is this guy? And you know, they were really suspicious and really protective of me. And uh, you know, I guess had their guns under the counter ready or I don't I don't know um but I really um yeah I'm running out of time it was so cool how much they cared about me and I thought it was really cool how much this young man wanted to return my guitar to me and you might be thinking the same thing I'm thinking and some other people suggest maybe the person who returned it to me is actually the person who stole it. And that's believable too. Um, easy to believe that a 22 year old young man wants to return the guitar and make amends uh, for what he did when he was 17 and drunk at a party or something like that. Um, and uh, I was really glad to meet him and um, very grateful and just touched uh, that that this person gave my guitar back to me regardless of how he um, got a hold of it and just had this close connection to someone who uh, otherwise I would have never known and and would not have you know been hanging out with for any reason and just uh, really grateful so that's how I got the guitar back. And uh, I guess if there's anything else important I need to tell you, I'll just slip that in next time. So we're gonna be learning our notes pretty soon down here and uh, about two lessons on that. And then we're gonna get into our um, well-tempered work or what I'm going to call, I think I'm gonna call it guitar mastery exercises because um, then everybody knows what it means. Uh, so thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.